Hey guys, it's me again, CuteMimi25, making another video. It's time for yet again another top 5 video. And this list this time is the top 5 shows that I miss watching on GSN. Now remember, these are GSN original shows. Another thing I should mention that these are GSN original shows, not reruns of classic shows that used to air on ABC, NBC, CBS, or Fox, and such. And that aren't being rerun on GSN anymore. And I'd like to do a little rant on the current GSN logo. I hate it. It's a ripoff of MSN Channel 9 logo from Australia. And I think they should change this logo into the 2004 logo that says GSN. And they're, change their slogan back to the Network for Games. To be honest, I prefer those ideas. I know some people would disagree with me and say they should change back to the 1997 to 2003 logo that letters... Game and show where squares and the letter O is a ball that has a little swirl on it and the letter G is red. I know the items from 1997 to 2003 were pretty good and such, but I want the classic black GSN logo back. And I want the slogan, the network for games, back as well. Anyway, let's get to the top five shows I miss watching on GSN that aren't being rerun anymore or in, up for a new season. Number five. Number five goes to a game show called How Much Is Enough. It's a game show where four contestants are triggered with a money clock that counts down from counts up from zero up to a thousand, then two thousand down to zero, zero up to three thousand, four thousand down to zero, and zero up to five thousand. And each player is trying not to be the last one to lock in if the money clock is counting up. Or the first one to lock in if the money clock is counting down. And on the fifth round, not the first cautious, the cautious player or the greediest of the group. Because if they are, they will receive no money. And the two people who have the highest amount without being the greediest of the group will go on to the final round. And they will combine the two totals together and make a grand total. I thought the music was great, and the set was pretty fun. In fact, th this show needs a comeback. Heck, even Corbin Bernstein was a pretty good host. I I wish somebody would post the episode where Corbin Bernstein says, How much is enough? And one contestant says, It's never enough. And Corbin's like, What? I mean, seriously, if someone has that episode, please upload it. I thought it was very funny. Oh, well. Overall, I wish the show would come back. Anyway, that's number five. Let's look at number four. Number four. Number four goes to Playmania. It's an interactive show that aired, that started back in 2006, if I remember correctly. It started on April 6th, and this this was mo a lot more fun than GSN Live, to be honest. I mean, GSN Live was okay, but Playmania was more fun, in my opinion. I, I personally liked it because of Shandy Fennessy and Mel Peachy, to be honest. It's a show where you call in at home or text in and try to win some cash. There are games like Top 5, Missing Link, Alpha Bucks, and stuff like that. Where you call in, hopefully if you get it right, you will win some cash. If You can also send in some stuff to the host on the show. Later on during the Playmania lifespan... Playmania, Playmania turned into Quiz Nation, which is the original Playmania. And they also had a block called 100 Winners, where you can win. They have 100 safes, and you can pick a safe, hoping that you will win uh, the big 1,000 or some other cool prizes as well. Or perhaps you could be lucky enough to win two stuff from the vault. Just... Be careful what you pick on the vault. Anyway, that's number four. Let's get on with number three. Number three. Number three goes to Friend or Foe, a classic game show network show that aired back in 2002 and last a little less than a year, unfortunately. Now, it was originally hosted by some girl who goes by the name Kennedy. I don't know her last name, or nobody knows it, but... She was a pretty good host of the show, Friend or Foe. In the first season, they start off by each contestant picks their potential partner. And if there's a tie, the potential partner will pick who they want their partner to be and such. And then they start the game, and each team will start with their fund with $200. And each time, they have to agree with the answer for each question. But if, 
within the time limit. Otherwise, if they fail to do that, they get no money. And if they lock in with the wrong answer, they don't get any money. If they get an answer right, they'll earn a certain amount of money depending on the score. For the two lowest players who have not earned as much money in the game will have to step out of the booth and go to the trust box and either press friend. If both of them choose friend, they split the money. If one of them chooses foe, foe will get the entire dough. Friend will get absolutely nada. And if both choose foe, they both go home with absolutely nothing. And uh, later on in the series, they randomly decided who their partner will be. I particularly like the older way where they pick their partners and start off the bank with $200. And in the bonus game, uh, they play right or wrong. And they have 60 seconds to get as many questions right. They'll be given two options. One is a right answer, one is a wrong answer. Get an answer right, they earn 500 bucks. Get it wrong, they will get a strike. And like in baseball, three strikes, it's game over. You won't lose any money if you pick a wrong answer. Nor in the regular game play. You just don't get the extra dough. And to be a little more dramatic on the final trust box, they like to be a little dramatic and show one player what they've chose and the other player after that. Overall, Friend or Foe is a great show. Let's move on to number two. Number two. Ah, another classic, Russian Roulette. Now, this is a game show that originally started back in 2002. I remember seeing the preview when Mark Wahlberg told the person to step up on the trap door and he wanted to get a picture of that guy and he dropped right through the hole. That commercial is hilarious. If I find it on YouTube, I'd put in this on the annotation that you see on screen. If you don't see an annotation, either A, you don't have annotations on, or B, I don't, I couldn't find the clip. But if I did find it, you would definitely see it on screen. Unless you're watching it on a mobile device, then I recommend watching it on a PC and have your annotations turned on. Russian Roulette is a game where four contestants, I'm talking about the American version, not the foreign versions, which I like the foreign versions as well. And there are six trap doors. And the first round, they start off, each of them start off with 150. And they start off with one drop zone. After every question, they add one more drop zone until they get to five. Because the highest they can go is five drop zones. I mean, they wouldn't go to six because if it's six, they automatically drop and the game would be rigged. And to be honest, Mark Wahlberg was a great host of that show. And on April Fool's Day, it was hosted by Todd Newton, which is pretty... He was pretty good on April Fool's Day. But the game works like this. They pass it on the question to a person who they think does, does not know the answer. It originally starts off with three options, but on the second and third round, there are four options. And if they get it right, they will earn 150 for the first round. The second round, 200 bucks. Third round, and for season one, is 300. And the second season, 250. And each time they get a question right or wrong, a drop zone is added. If they get an answer wrong, that person loses the money who was challenged by that other contestant. And they have to pull the lever to see if their light is blue, they'll still be in the game. But if it's red, they drop right through the floor. And if you hear a sound effect that says, time's up, whoever's in the lead will automatically be safe from dropping. But if we have a tie, or if they have a tie, the host will pull the lever, and whoever drops, drops. The person who drops, who has money, will lose the money and will be split among the remaining contestants. If the person who has no money drops, then no money is split. And whoever is remaining in the game, they get to play a bonus round. On the first season, they will be given, well, on both seasons, they'll be given 60 seconds. But on the first season, they start the clock even though the host is reading the first question, which I didn't like. I prefer having the question read first before the clock starts. And every 10 seconds that is passed, each drop zone will open. And in the first season, they have to give at least five questions correctly. In the second season, they doubled it to 10. I don't know what they were thinking. They should have kept the get five right in the bonus round. And in the first season, they had to say the phrase, my answer is, before giving the answer. And in season two, they got rid of that, which I thought was a better decision. And if they 
miss a question or run out of time, they automatically drop right through the hole. And whatever, how many questions they get right, in Season 1, they get $500 for each question right. And they'll get $300 for each question they get right in Season 2. Like, if they get 9 right in Season 2 or 4 right in Season 1 and fail to get the last question right. If they succeed getting all the questions right in both versions, they'll earn $10,000 and have a shot to risk playing Russian Roulette one more time for $100,000. If they want to keep the money, what they do is pull the lever and step off the trap door. And if they drop, well, if the trap door opens, then they did the right thing taking the money. Or if they are still, if the trap door stays closed, then they just missed out on an extra 90000 And if they choose to gamble for the 100000 they have to give back the 10000 and pull the lever one last time. I did see a contestant pull a lever and actually failed to get 100000 I don't know where that clip is. If it's there, I'd probably put it in the annotations in the video. But overall, Mark Wahlberg, great game show host. He also did a few others like on the cover, and he was a great announcer for Shop Till You Drop, but an okay host for a moment of truth. But he's mostly notable in Russian Roulette. And when I think of Russian Roulette, I think of this classic game show. Not that awful song by Rihanna, and not that original Russian Roulette where they put a gun towards their head and risk their lives. That's number two on my list, and now let's get to my number one show that I miss watching on GSN that they need to rerun or bring back in a new series. Number one. Ah yes, Bingo America is number one on the list that I miss watching on GSN. It's an interactive show, just like Playmania, but unlike Playmania, this you actually print bingo cards. You get two bingo cards that you print online, and... Hopefully you will win, um, you can print up to 10, count them, 10 bingo cards, and hopefully you will win 50 bucks or perhaps 1,000, depending on uh, what day it is. If it's Wednesday, it's called Winner Wednesday. That was only during Richard Karn's run of Bingo America. And uh, personally, I like Patrick Duffy as a host more. Richard Karn was not that bad, but if I had to choose between Patrick and... Richard, I'd pick Patrick Duffy any day. However, I will admit Richard Karn's version was a bit better because you get to, the audience gets to play along as well. And, yeah. What the game works is two contestants try to get the letters B-I-N-G-O, and there are going to be two rounds. If both contestants win one round, there is going to be a sudden death where each question has the letters B, I, N, G, O. Kind of like questions from Blockbusters, sort of, but with only three of those letters, B, I, N, G, O, and that's it. Now, the bonus round works a bit different in the Duffy version and the Karn version. Both have a chance to win up to $100,000. Except if you win 100000 on Patrick Duffy's version, you, not only will you get 100000 but you will keep the bank that you won earlier in the game. In Karn's version, it's bye-bye to the bank you won. You just win 100000 Now, the board works on Duffy's version. You can pick any letter wherever you want to start. And they'll have prizes behind them. In Karn's version, you'll have to pick one letter from B, one from I, one from N, one through G, and one through O without hitting a wrecking ball. If you hit a wrecking ball... You lose all your money except for the money you won earlier. Anyway, the bonus game is if you pick each letter in Karn's version without hitting a wrecking ball, you will play the Super Bowl and press the plunger and hopefully pick have a bingo ball that pops out that is the same number or letter that you picked without hitting a wrecking ball. If you do that, you win $100,000. Before I forget, you also have bonus numbers, whatever they call it. If you look on your two bingo cards, they have random numbers and such. If they call the two numbers that you have, you what you do is register the code and win, and you will win some cash amount. Overall, Bingo America is a pretty good game show. I wish they'd bring the show back, as well as National Bingo Night. Both of those shows were great. And that is number one on my top five shows I miss watching on GSN. GSN, if you're watching this, please, I beg you, bring back Bingo America. That was fun. 
So that's my video. Thanks for watching. This is Cute Mimi Twenty Five signing.